in this section we will talk of the total energy gain in all the steps of aerobic respiration we discussed glycolysis then krebs cycle electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation so let us make a table and understand in which step what is the gain and we will calculate the atps so here we write the steps first step was glycolysis we got two pyruvic acids atp is also nadh also then what happened to those pyruvic acid molecules they are converted into acetyl coenzyme a and there was a short step before krebs cycle that was called decarboxylation of pyruvate or pyruvic acid or pyruvate decarboxylation after this step we get two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a and they enter into krebs cycle whatever atp nadh or fadh2 we got we got in only these three steps in electron transport chain fadh2 dissociates nadh2 dissociates and they release electron so here we are not getting anything we are getting created a, or rather we have created a condition by which the protons were pumped into the outer compartment and in oxidative uh, phosphorylation it is just sending those protons back so that we are able to synthesize atp so whatever gain takes place gain takes place in this process so here let us talk about straight away how many atps we get as atp in glycolysis four atps are synthesized in all but two are spent in the first half which we call the energy investment phase so we get only two atps two molecules of atps in this decarboxylation process there is no atp we are getting only nadh so here there is nothing in the form of straight atp in krebs cycle if you remember succinyl coenzyme a to succinic acid there is one gdp to gtp conversion which ultimately gives us atp so here we get atp we have to keep in mind that glucose is giving us two pyruvic acids and two pyruvic acids will have to go through two krebs cycles so in krebs cycle we will get two ATPs one in each Krebs cycle. Now let us talk about the other molecules. That is FADH2 or NADH2. In glycolysis, when glycerol dehyde three phosphate undergoes reactions, one NADH2 is synthesized, and this reaction takes place two times. So we get two. NADH2 and one NADH2 is equivalent to three ATPs. So this is two molecules into three ATPs. We will get six ATPs here. In this, nothing else is synthesized. So two ATPs directly and six later on. In decarboxylation of pyruvate. Every time one pyruvic acid gets converted into acetyl coenzyme A, we were getting one NADH2. So here also there are two NADH2. Same, two into three, we will get six ATPs here also. Coming to Krebs cycle. In Krebs cycle, two ATPs as straight ATP currency and three NADH2. And one FADH2. This is from one Krebs cycle. So this has to be two times because starting with one glucose, we will get double the number. That means six NADH2 and two FADH2. So total six NADH2, each giving us three ATPs. Eighteen here. 
and 2FADH2 each giving us 2FADH2 each giving us only 2 ADPs. This will give us 4 ADPs. So far total is clear. Now let us do a grand total. So, in glycolysis, 6 ATPs here, 2 here, so we have 8 ATPs overall in the entire process. In the second step, that is decarboxylation, we have 6 ATPs here. In this case, 18 from 6 NADH and we have taken 6 NADH because there are two, two Krebs cycles which are taking place and 2 FADH2 which we are taking. So 18 plus 4 will give us 22 plus these two ATPs which are directly coming. So that will give us 24 ATPs. Now if we do our totaling of all three steps, 24 plus 6 plus 8, this will give us 38 ATPs. Whenever we talk about aerobic respiration, we say we get 36 ATPs. Whereas in this calculation, we are coming to 38 ATPs. Where is that 2 ATP confusion? Those 2 ATPs are utilized to pump these 2 NADH2 into mitochondria. You remember this glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm? That means ATP is also synthesized in cytoplasm. There is no problem with ATP. NADH2 is also synthesized in cytoplasm. And this has to get dissociated to release those electrons in electron transport chain. That is in mitochondria. Membrane of mitochondria is impermeable to NADH2. So this NADH2 has to be pumped actively into mitochondria. One ATP is required to pump one NADH, second ATP for the second one. So total we get is 38, but two are used up to pump the two NADH2 which are synthesized during glycolysis. So here we need to write this special thing that two ATPs get used up to pump 2 NADH2 synthesized during glycolysis and that is why whenever we talk of aerobic respiration we always say the total ATP gain is 36 Whereas our calculation is showing 38. So this is where we lose two more ATPs. That's how 36 ATPs from aerobic respiration and only two from anaerobic respiration. These NADH2, when they are pumped into mitochondria, there are two shuttle systems which work to pump them in. So let us talk about these shuttle systems now. So there are two shuttle systems which are going to help in transferring these two NADH from uh, sorry, cytoplasm to the mitochondria. The first shuttle system is known as glycerol phosphate shuttle system. glycerol phosphate shuttle system. Now what happens here is we are talking about a cell and this is the mitochondrial membrane. Here in the cytoplasm takes place glycolysis. So those NADH2 which are produced they are here and this membrane which we are showing is representing the mitochondrial membrane. This is mitochondrial membrane. NADH2 cannot go in. The membrane is impermeable to NADH. So now what happens here is this NADH2 dissociates into a pair of protons and 
NAB, two molecules and pair of protons. This pair of proton is actively pumped in. This is where one ATP is used. Now this proton is inside the mitochondrial matrix. If this proton gets accepted by FAD, we will get FADH2 synthesized. And FADH2 will give us two ATPs. So this is one option. In this shuttle system, what happens is, in the cytoplasm, NADH2, which is formed as a product of or as a result of glycolysis, on dissociation results into releasing of a pair of proton. This pair of proton is actively pumped into mitochondrial matrix. Here it is combined with FAD and we get FADH2 which is worth 2 ATPs. That means this shuttle system, glycerol phosphate shuttle system is not very efficient. The second shuttle system is known as malate aspartate shuttle system. In this shuttle system, same process with one difference. Same NADH2 which is produced as a result of glycolysis dissociates to give us NAD and a pair of protons. Same here, this pair of proton will be actively pumped in. So here also ATP will be used and here also ATP is used. And now this proton pair which has entered the mitochondrial matrix binds with NAD and the resulting substance that we get is NADH2 which is worth 3 ATPs. So, if NADH2 goes back through glycerol phosphate shuttle system, the ATP gain is 2. And if it goes through malate aspartate shuttle system, then the ATP gain is 3. And that is why malate aspartate shuttle system is a more efficient type of shuttle system. So, these two shuttle systems will help in transferring. NADH is not going to go in, but ultimately we are going to get energy. So these two shuttle systems help and this is where those two ATPs are used up and that's why we said from 38, two are lost to push the NADH into the mitochondrial matrix.